What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be talking about this new car that we have today that we're gonna be doing some upgrades on. And it is this. 67, 68 Nova. This thing is super, super clean. Like it is really clean. So my boy Eric at Florida High Performance owns this car and it is clearly meant for one thing and it's to break some hearts. We got a roll cage in here, some some old school Kirkley seats. Got the fancy little automatic shifter. But the really the real big kicker for this car is what's under the hood. Ugh. Look at this. Holy crap. So it's got a 632 big block, crate engine, and it's got all kinds of goodies up here. It's got a tubular front end, looks like, coilovers, the whole front end's been done. It's got a huge radiator up there. He's been working on this thing for a little bit now so that it could start getting on the track. But what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be getting this thing in the air and we're gonna be doing a brand new transmission mount. I believe this car did not have an engine that's big in it before. So the transmission brace is significantly small and the way they have it mounted with the bolts and everything like that just is not gonna work. So we're gonna redo that with some really big boy piping. We're also going to redo the exhaust from the headers back. This exhaust system on this car, I guess, has taken some damage from being so low. And also he just doesn't like the way it sounds. So we're gonna be upgrading all that. But for now, let's get this thing in the air and see exactly what we got going on. So, got this thing as tight up there as possible, as you can see. So it's gonna be grabbing the actual frame rail, and you can see it's substantially beefier this way. So, we're gonna go on the inside of this guy, Grab those two points where my index finger is here and here. So we have our lower transmission bracket all set. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it in like that. And what I ended up doing, just to give you guys a little recap, we went ahead and made these spacers. We widened this bad boy, cleaned it up, make it look real nice. And then we're going to be bolting it just like that. Once we bolt it in place, then we'll weld it. And I'm gonna weld as much as I can on the car because I'm gonna use the car as a fixture. Once it's all welded, we'll let it cool down to room temperature. We'll pop it off, weld the tops of these, and then we'll start making our support braces here and our support brace here to finish this out. Then we just have some hardware to figure out and then we can start on the exhaust. All right, so we got our transmission cross number done. Went ahead and added these support braces here. And whenever you're doing bracing like this and you want to brace a specific point, try to get your braces as close to that point as possible so you don't have any shear points. Obviously, when the transmission's mounted here, you have torque of the engine, the transmission, the entire drive line. So we want to make it as strong as possible. When you're welding tubes together, go ahead and make yourself a relief hole for gas. The, the air trapped inside this, this hollow cavity heats up. And when it heats up, it expands. And when the uh, metal becomes molten from when you're welding it, it sits there and pops and ruins your weld. So what I like to do is a little relief hole in the pipes to give it the room for the gas to escape when the air in the cavity warms up. So the next step, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and throw this back in the car with our cleat coats on the bottom. We're gonna transfer our holes over on the sides to make room for our hardware and then we get to move on to the exhaust system. 
So our transmission cross member is all set. Now it's time to do the exhaust system. So we went ahead and stuck this old bad boy over here. Eric was saying that it was pretty janky. It's not necessarily as janky as it is massive. This is a, a four inch exhaust. Looks like it's been Cerakoted. And these mufflers are the, by far the biggest I've ever seen. These things are humongous. And there's no wonder why this thing did not sound as rowdy as he wants it to sound. So we got some race style pass-through mufflers. They're gonna give the car a lot more of a aggressive sound. These giant packed mufflers that are packed with fiberglass and have a bunch of baffles in them and everything like that are gonna quiet the car down substantially. We have some material here from Tycon. We're going to unbox some stuff that we have here and start laying out the exhaust. Now, for the initial exhaust system, obviously we have our point A and our point B back here. We're gonna be doing a turn down and we're gonna put the muffler right inside of this cavity here. We're gonna take advantage of all this fab that someone did already to accommodate the exhaust being tucked up and really nice and tight inside this chassis. I originally wanted to do a cross pipe to be able to merge the banks together because when you merge your left and right bank, that's what gets the symphony of any sort of engine. When you leave them independent of each other, like a Dodge Viper or a Shelby Cobra or anything like that, that's when you get like this more freight train sound. They're not merged together and you don't have like that sing that you get when you have an X pipe or an H pipe. It sounds more of like a UPS truck or not nearly as nice on the ears as it would be if you merge the, car, the, the two banks together. So unfortunately we're not gonna be able to do that because I'm not gonna cut up the chassis. I'd have to put more notches here. These linear frame rails are what's needed in order to get a lot of strength in this car. So we're gonna go ahead and just do the true dual setup the way that he originally had it with just nicer mufflers and nicer materials. So let's get unboxing. All right, so we have these huge four inch straight through mufflers that look pretty spicy. So this is gonna give us the rumble and the aggressiveness we need. As you can see, this is a straight through style race muffler. What this is gonna do is it's going to get rid of the super high pitch raspiness that you'd hear on a straight through exhaust. So we're gonna go ahead and put our slash tips on these guys. We're gonna take this four inch 90, cut it straight across here like this to give it that nice slash tip look. And you're gonna go ahead and weld these in. Like I said before, we're gonna work reverse on this exhaust system. I want the mufflers in place and the pipes in place before we connect them to the headers so that we know exactly where our point A and point B are. So I'm gonna run my, run my exhaust all the way up to this point, probably stop about here, and then figure out what we have to do about getting this to connect to the, we just could do a little jog, just boop, connect it right to it. So we're gonna do that now get our center section in place, and then start connecting our dots. So we got our turn downs all welded onto our mufflers. So basically what we're doing is we're aiming the exhaust pulses down to the ground to kind of bounce across the bottom of the car. And when you do turn downs like this, that's what happens. You basically are increasing the noise, it's shaking the ground and making the thing a lot more aggressive. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. And go right up in that channel like that. And then we're just gonna have to do a straight pipe to the front and then we'll make a little connection to our header. So we're gonna go get those measurements down, get these cut, get them welded to our mufflers, get them up into position. And then from there, we'll figure out our hangers and then figure out what we're gonna do about this transition here. All right, so we got the passenger side done. As you can see, we did a nice little swoopy swoop here. We used our, our 90 degree bend, cut it in half, created a 45, and then we were able to use some leftover pie cuts here to be able to get this transition. So it's nowhere near as much as it was before, dipping down, so we should have plenty of clearance for this. Thankfully on this side, the collector is actually higher, so it's nowhere near as drastic as a bend as this side was. This side actually gave me a lot of trouble trying to get 
this transition right and figure out where everything needed to be to get everything to flow and not have like a huge amount of cheats. This is still held together with a uh, good old fashioned blue tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that side all done and then we can bring the welder over, tack it together, and then we're gonna transfer over our tabs for our hangers. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the driver's side now, finish that up, and then we'll bring the welder over and start welding everything. And then we can take it off the car and do our final weld. All right guys, so the exhaust is just about done. We got uh, this section all welded up and we got our mufflers in. Everything's hanging under its own weight. So we're gonna drop it down now so we can put our O2 bungs in and then we're gonna final weld our hangers. So we got one hanger on this side and this side. We've reused these hanger points that they had. I really like the way that was set up. The exhaust kind of sits in its own little pocket. So it's looking really, really cool. So we're gonna drop this down now, final weld it and then throw it in the car for the last time and see what it looks like. All right guys, the exhaust system is done. We got the cross member in. Chris went ahead and gave this a nice fresh coat of plaque with some nice zinc plated grade eight bolts. That's looking pretty fresh. Got some pie cut action going on right here. Got our O2 bungs in, our V bands welded up. Everything's pretty much set to go. We reused our hangers over here and this thing is solid. So we're not really worried about exhaust hangers with bushings and all that because this thing has a motor plate. Everything is solid mounted. So we're not gonna worry about this exhaust moving. Now I know what you're thinking. Let's start it up and hear it. Can't do that right now. We're gonna go up to go on a field trip. So we're gonna head down to Eric's shop at Florida High Performance, throw this thing on the dyno, hear it start up for the first time and actually run through some gears. So let's get at it. All right, Eric's Florida High Performance. You're supposed to wait for us to start the car, but it's already running. Listen to this thing. Seven eighty-five. So that kills my predictions. Oh my god! That's, so, you know, and he's like barely even touched the throttle, probably. You know. So at eighty-five, this thing would probably eat like no problem, over a thousand easy. I mean, yeah, with the right fuel tuning, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's definitely got the cubes for it. got room in it probably a lot right just getting no, started no. just getting no. warmed up no, no, no. <laughs> all right so that was the second hit dude it's loud even with earmuffs in uh, 808 808 horsepower called way off on my guess Justin from Pro's Tuning, the local tuner here in Palm Beach, Florida. You're just telling me that this thing actually needs more air. Yeah. Like the throttle body is not big enough. Correct. So like when you were explaining about being in vacuum the whole time, what does that mean? Uh, just the motor creates uh, more, I guess, flow than the throttle body and air induction can uh, can do. So restriction. So restriction. so we need more air. So that means we do need a turbo air. No. <laughs> How many CFM is this? I think it's like 4,000 or something. 4,000. It's, it's a massive throttle. 4,000 and it's still not enough air. 
So you're saying about 50 more horsepower if we got a bigger throttle body? Yeah, somehow to put a bigger throttle body. Well, you want to get a little bit more out of it though, right? No, I'm, I'm happy. You're happy? I am. 800 wheel, man. So 800 wheel, we're good to go. Well, remember, 93 out of the box, drive every day anywhere, 800 wheel. This is sick, man. So 800 horsepower, you're happy? You're happy? Definitely. I think this is a fantastic start. We've got a guy, a professional tuner in here, it's dialing it in, it's running great. It's doing everything it's supposed to be doing. I would say from what it what it's rated at, the, the crank to what it's making at the wheels on this setup is, is, is accurate through that stall converter. And as you know, he just alluded to, we've got a, a restriction in, in just total airflow into the engine, and that's that's really going to hinder you know yeah. performance. I'd say past 5,500 or so, it's just going to kind of run out of steam. So. Hey, E85 would be an easy thing to do. You know, we'd have to just change the injectors and the fuel system setup, but. I think you need four curious. figures in your life. Four so we figures need, at the wheel. So we need a spacer, we need more E85, and we need to throw this thing on the rollers in December. All right, guys, we showed you exactly what the Nova could do on the dyno, and I am blown away at what big blocks can do. It's insane. I'm thoroughly reminded all the time how much power they make and the rumble in the old chesticles. But before we leave, I just wanted to run through the shop and show you guys exactly what Eric does here at Florida High Performance. How long did you work on that name? You're in Florida, so and you work on high performance cars. I sat there. It took me a couple years. We, we really we went to you know pen to paper. We're like, man, what focus, do we do? Focus groups. Where are we? What would really appeal? What makes sense? Went through thousands of names. Landed on Florida High Performance. Go figure. I but, do like the logo on the hat, though. That's yeah, a cool shirt. The, which one is this? Oh, yeah, it's like our Miami Vice theme thing. I like so. that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, Florida High Performance, man. Nice and simple. It's exactly what we do. Uh, we're a shop in Florida that focus, uh, focuses on uh, performance vehicles, specifically late model GM. So Yeah, these old pieces of the Camaros yeah, and stuff like the, that. What do we call them, the Redneck Rocket? Yeah, yeah, Redneck Rockets. Late model LS, now LT, of course. Uh, that is our bread and butter. That is what we do. We do not deviate from that. I have been doing this sort of stuff for about 22 years now. And, um, you know, we, we have a variety of builds here. The Nova is unique in that. That has a big block in it. We don't do a lot of big block stuff normally, but... Um, this is my Nova, and I wanted the baddest motor GM has ever built for it, so there you go. It's a little shop, you know. Yeah, it's small, but you know what? Like we were saying before, the car industry is under attack. Yep. A lot of um, owners of, of shop spaces don't want car performance places in their place. Right. So it's almost a miracle when you can find somewhere to even work on cars anymore. Correct. And that's the reason why I built the barn, guys. And fun fact, Eric was my very first customer. I was. He works. You believe in me, buddy. Yeah, red sled. Yeah, we still, still have it, big turbo car. Yeah. Um, we're, we're still working on it, work in progress. Unfortunately, when you own a shop, there's not a lot of time to work on your own stuff. I'm no. sure you guys see on Tim's videos how, how much work he puts into other people's cars and then he's got to work on his stuff. So, you know, certainly time is always a factor in this business and we never have enough of it. But yeah, man, we, uh, we do everything. Supercharging, turbocharging, a lot of tuning happens here. We do have an in-ground uh, dyno jet. A lot of shiny billet uh, parts. A lot of shiny stuff, you know, head I'll cam swaps and uh, you name it, that's what we do. And I like your shop because it's like old school. This is what it reminds me of like where I grew up when I was a kid. Yeah. Going to these like old timer shops yeah. that just make cars fast yep. and you're just doing it. And you have no shortage of crate motors in there. How many yeah. do you have in the shop right I now? I counted like a, a total between this location or little bay next door like 20. Crate motors ready to go. Sh yeah, short blocks of different sh sh shapes and sizes and you know. And these yeah. are all motors for boost? Yes. These are all big boy engines. Yes. 800 horsepower, 1,000 yep. yep. horsepower, yep. street driven daily drivers. The average build right now we're putting out is about 850 horsepower. That's kind of a run of the mill build here. You know, if it's boosted, of course, and, and more. Now we're starting cracking, we're, we're cracking four digit wheel horsepower marks on a regular basis. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, so, so what do you have next door? That's just kind of an overflow bay. I would love to have a little bit bigger place and we're looking, but you know, as you said, it's, it's hard to find a place, especially in Boca. Yeah. You kind of have a small place that's affordable or a big massive place that costs way too much money. And then obviously the overhead has to go up and the quality goes down because now you're hiring a lot of extra people to, you know, do work and hopefully they don't screw it up. So how many years have you been in the business? I've been in business 22 years. You've been in business 22 years. I've been doing this since 2001. Yeah. We should do an episode about how hard this business is. Absolutely. Comment below guys if you want to hear like inside baseball, if you want to get into the performance world. Um, but I won't take up any, too much more of your time. I know you're busy and you have a lot going on. Yep. The Nova's ready to rip. Hopefully yes. we can get some driving sh shots of that thing when it's sure. a little drier. Sure. Likes to rain a lot in Florida in the summertime. <laughs> I don't know if you guys realize that. So today is kind of like a, a crappy day. Otherwise we'd probably do some driving shots, but we really can't. But thanks a lot for having us, man. Thank you for building the exhaust on the Nova. I tried. Beautiful job. 
And that's what that car deserved, and that's why I took it to Tim. I uh, wouldn't take it anywhere else. So Thanks, man. We're going to bring the, Dyna the DeLorean here in the near future and see what it can do on the rollers. But until then, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you on the next episode.